Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. In this content, we will briefly learn an experiment vital to the scientific toolkit that involves an antibiotic and how we use this antibiotic to measure protein synthesis in cells or tissues. Learn your body, a science-based education. Scientists often want to measure protein synthesis in cells and tissues, be it liver, muscle, or any other tissue, for any number of reasons. There are several ways of doing it, but this is one of the easiest and a really clever way of doing it. We use an antibiotic, pure myosin, and as we will see, it will allow us to measure protein synthesis. So how do we do it? Let's say we're working with cells for this example. We've put our cells onto a plate, which are surrounded by nourishing liquid filled with all the necessary nutrients to keep them alive. And we simply add pyromycin, the antibiotic, to the liquid for some time. Now the cells will take up that pyromycin over that duration of time. Proteins are made up of amino acids that are strung together by ribosomes into a multiple amino acid chain. Now, proteins will need different amino acids to create different proteins, obviously. But one amino acid, tyrosine, is chemically structurally similar to pure myosin. So, as you might be able to guess, the cell has a lot of structurally similar pure myosin floating around at this point because we've added it to the liquid nourishing the cells. So the cells ribosomes responsible for protein synthesis begin incorporating pyromycin instead of tyrosine into the cells proteins. However, although pyromycin and tyrosine are structurally similar, they have one key difference, otherwise they'd be the same molecule. And that difference is that pyromycin cannot be cut to allow a following amino acid to be added to the amino acid chain. Once it is placed by the ribosome and its accompanying tRNA, it gets stuck, meaning translation or protein synthesis is terminated, leaving the pyromycin stuck to an incomplete protein chain. So while the proteins are being completely synthesized, they are created with a pyromycin tag we can now track. As a result of this tag, we can measure total pyromycin tag protein by using antibodies that are specific for pyromycin. If we have two time points at which we take our measurements, we can know the amount of pyromycin tag protein at the first time point and at the second time point, then compare the difference and relate it to the time of measurement to get a rate of protein synthesis. However, we can also follow the same procedure, but instead of measuring pyromycin tag protein amount, we can visualize it by using immunochemistry and fluorescent microscopy. With immunohistochemistry, we use a microscope to follow the change in pyromycin within the cells by allowing fluorescent antibodies to bind the pyromycin incorporated proteins, and then we can measure. In this case, we get two benefits. One, we can actually see the change in real time as well as where the proteins are going. And second, we can measure the intensity of the fluorescence and still get an amount of synthesized pyromycin incorporated proteins. And there we have it. Pyromycin incorporated proteins can be specifically measured and allow researchers control over time points of measurement. These are keys to finding the rate of protein synthesis in cells and tissue. I hope this proved informative and I hope to have the absolute pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Cheers.